Well, first of all, the community service learning centers are going to be owned and operated by the dental school. They're going to be an integral part of the dental school. And the example we've used on, on a number of occasions is it really is taking the fourth floor of the dental school, wiring it, cutting it into 10 pieces, stretching the wires, and moving the fourth floor of the dental school out into rural areas of the state, complete with faculty, complete with the video conferencing, complete with the students and the patients that live in those communities. When you look at North Carolina, we are the fifth fastest growing state uh, in the country. When you look at the number of dentists per population, we typically use a metric of so many dentists per 10,000. North Carolina, the average is uh, about 4.4 in, uh, in the state. When you look at the urban areas, we have about 4.9 dentists per 10,000. Nationally, it is uh, six dentists per 10,000. When that all boils down, we're 47th out of 50 in the number of dentists to population. We've also got a, an aging uh, dentist population. A third of the dentists in the state are 55 years of age and older. So when we realize that we're starting at 47, a third of the dentists practicing today are 55 years of age and older, and we're the fifth fastest growing state, we can see that there not only is a tremendous need out there right now, but there's even going to be more. Then when you divide the state into the urban 15 counties and the rural 85 counties, you really begin to see more of a difference. Because those numbers I was talking about with six dentists per 10,000 on average, 4.9 dentists per 10,000 in the urban areas, when you look at the 85 rural counties, they average between 3 and 3.1, depending on which year we're talking about roughly three dentists per 10,000 in the rural communities. We see the challenge is to get more dentists out to serve those, that population in the rural communities, and that's the opportunity that, uh, that ECU has with our new dental school. The important thing for the students is they're not gonna get all of their education within the four walls of the dental school and learn about what it might be like out in a Husky or Elizabeth City or a Silva. They'll actually be going out to those three sites plus the seven other sites. And they'll be not only working in those communities, but they'll be seeing the patients that come to the, uh, to the clinics, but they'll have the opportunity to go out and promote oral health. They'll be able to go out and see school children. They'll also have the opportunity out in the service learning centers, maybe to work with a faculty member, maybe assist on an interesting procedure if they don't have, a, you know, have, have, have one going on as well. Behind us is the, uh, the construction of Ross Hall. That's gonna be the dental school. That's gonna be the first three years of, uh, of our program here in Greenville. Uh, we've already accepted 50 students. Uh, they'll start in August. We expect this building to be completed in the summer of, uh, of 2012. All four years of our students will be here, but as we've already talked about, uh, a good portion of that senior class will be rotating out in the 10 Community Service uh, Learning Center. We're excited to see the building going up and it's exciting to see the, the cranes actually putting the, uh, the top floor on.